to turn your Bibles with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, please. And my sermon title tonight is, Is There Not a Cause? Is There Not a Cause? And by the way, uh, our life, um, our, our life is, is, is here for, to serve the Lord. Um, and uh, by the, the Bible says we're to serve the Lord with several things, gladness being one of them. But 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'm, uh, we're talking about David and Goliath. Uh, we read that in our text, uh, in our Bible reading this week. How many people read it this week? You, if you are following along the Bible reading schedule, you should have read it. If you did not read it, I know you're not following, then I, then I know you're not following the Bible reading schedule. But 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 17, we're going to read down to verse 29 and uh, just follow along as I read it. Um, and it says, and, J- and Jesse said unto David his son, Take now uh, for thy brethren an ephod, which is a part of ephod of this parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren. I want you to notice the fact that he had to run. There was a sense of urgency. But my dear friends, there was a sense of urgency for something different than what... what uh, what um, to get fed, not 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 for the battle. Okay, verse uh, eighteen, and carry these ten uh, ten cheeses unto the captain of their uh, of their thousands, and and look how thy brethren fare, and take and take their pledge. Now Saul and they that all the men of Israel were in the valley of Aliah. Uh, fighting with the Philistines and David arose up early in the morning and left his uh, left the sheep with the with a keeper and took and went and as Je- as Jesse had commanded him and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array against army against army and David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army. And notice again, he ran. He, he ran. There's a sense of urgency here. And came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came, um, there came up uh, the, the champion, the, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words as David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they, had, uh, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the, man of Israel, the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men and stood by him, saying, What shall be done to that man that killeth the Philistines? And he taketh away the reproach, uh, and taketh away the reproach from Israel. Who for, uh, the, who, uh, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now you have to understand that uncircumcised Philistines, they, they, they called them dirty. They were dirty. They, they, were, they, were, they were disgusting to them. Uh, who is this uncircumcised Philistines? For he, uh, that he should defy the armies of the living God. And the people answered after the same manner, saying, So shall it be done to that man that killeth him. Verse 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he, has, when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And, 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 and he said, why canst thou, uh, why camest thou, thou down hither? Now, let me stop there for a second. When sometimes people who preach uh, get mad at the preacher, their anger is kindled. Why? Because they're backslidden. Okay, just, just saying here. Um, just, just work with me here. And uh, with whom how thou hast left for uh, a few sheep in the wilderness, uh, I know thy pride and th- thy naughtiness from thine heart for thou art come down 
that thou mayest see the battle. And David said, I, ha I, I, I have, what have I done, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? That's my text tonight. Is there not a cause? My dear friends, I, there, there is a cause for us. There is a dirtiness of the, uh, of the uncircumcised, unsaved people. Okay? Um, we, uh, when, I, when we went to the Philippines, I, I thought uh, um, as we were landing, and, I, and again, I'm reminiscing of my trip. I might, I might do that for a few weeks. Um, we, when we landed, I, I was thinking, or as we were flying over there, I was thinking, what's, what's the need of the people? What's the need of the people? What's the need of the people in the Philippines? How can we be a blessing to them? And as we were landing, we got off the plane, and the first thing we saw was a statue of Mary. And I looked over and there was a, a person kneeling down and, and touching the statue at the airport. And, and uh, I'm thinking, man, okay, same. We got on the next plane and we come out and there was another statue. And we got in a car and there, there were statues as we were driving. The cause is the same anywhere we go. We need to win the lost and dying world. We're fighting over stupid things. We're fooling around. We're not listening in church. We're not going out for the battle. And you know who you are. We play Christian. We need to be more like David. We know that David put on the armor, and the king's armor. It was too. It wasn't proved. It was too heavy for him. He took it off and grabbed five smooth stones, put them in his pouch, grabbed his sling, and. Killed Goliath. Took his own sword and cut off his head. There's your. So said to the Philippines, the Philippines, Philistines. There is your man. Well, my dear friends, we have the same power as David did. Twenty-seven people got saved. A security guard got saved. My brother from another mother got saved. Family members got saved. Lives got changed. I'm thinking of Pastor Solas. He said he was a mean guy before he got saved. And God got, he was in a car wreck. And, and, and God allowed his arm to be taken from him and now he's been pastoring uh, 30 some years and in this one church they celebrated their 24th anniversary he started he started many churches and even dogs and chickens come to his church amen is there not a cause hey if there wasn't a cause maybe pastor martin wouldn't have spent 40 years Forty years at Iloilo Baptist Church. What a wonderful church it is. And by the way, the same God that's over there is the same God that can be here. I said can be here if we invite him. Our church is 13 years old. It's time to let's 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 time to get busy a little a little, a little more busier. We're worried about our sleep patterns. Our money, our overtime, our friends uh, socializing. You know what? You can socialize with your unsaved friends on this earth, but you're not going to socialize with them in eternity because they're going to be in hell because of you. I come back from, Can or from, from the Philippines, but I come back to Canada with a new vigor to see souls saved and a new 
righteous angerness of Christians who have just been sitting around, who sit around and sit around. It's time that we get going. Is there not a cause? Our first full day there, I saw two, two funeral processions. I saw three the next day. And their funeral processions, uh, the hearse, they go and they have this ungodly music playing and they, they walk, their family walks behind the, 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 the hearse and, 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 and they're, 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 they're doing the sign of the cross. And, and, and you know, more, more than likely, they're probably in hell. Is there not a cause? Hey, if people can go to the Philippines and risk getting ostracized and, 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 and beaten and in some parts of the Philippines even killed because of the fact that they stand for the Lord, why can't we hear? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Well, I'm here to answer that. In Proverbs 29, verse 18, my text verse, this is without a vision the people perish. Uh, sorry, my life first, not my text first. But without a vi- without a vision, people the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Is he? We must have a vision. Proverbs twenty nine and eighteen. We must have a vision to see souls saved. Do you have that vision? Do you have the vision? You know, uh, when when little pa- uh, when. Uh, uh, Patricia and Patrick and, and Anna Lynn uh, got saved on, 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 on Friday. Man, it got, I got excited. When, uh, when, when the, the two other people at the Bible study got saved, I got excited. When, when Edwin got saved, I got excited. When, when the 21 people came forward and got saved, I got excited. When the five, six people got baptized, I got excited. Why are we not excited to see souls saved here in Canada? Have we become content with this little crowd? I preach to a thousand, I preach to fifty, and I preach to this crowd here tonight. It's the same God for the same, for the amount of crowds. We're more worried about what's in our purses or in our backpack in church rather than what is being preached behind the pulpit. We're more worried about how we look rather than who we are proclaiming. We're more worried if we fit in rather than if we're getting people into heaven. Are you a faithful servant? Are you like David and, and see that he ran and he ran and he ran and, and, and that it, they, there was a sense of urgency? Do you see a sense of urgency in seeing souls saved? The, the hockey accident that happened last week where 16 people died. I wonder how many of those were saved. As we look around us, the fields are white under harvest. They're ready to be. They're ready to be reaped. So we need to quickly go, and we must get busy because there's no so much work to do. There's an urgent task that is awaiting us, and that souls are crying, men are dying, and well, we just need to lead them to the cross. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, as still applies today. My, my Christian brother, we need to check our fold. We need to keep, our, keep our, 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 our spring in our step. And we need to still continue on. We need to stop fighting over our doctrinal differences. If, they, if we believe in salvation by grace through faith plus nothing else, we can agree on that. The color of the pews, whether we look at it, whether we wear a tie. You know what? There's more people worried if we wear, if the preacher wears a shirt and tie and a jacket rather than what he's preaching. You know, I was over in the Philippines. They just don't, they don't wear ties. The Sunday morning, I think I I took off my tie. It was hot. And the pastor said, you know what? I don't wear a tie. So I took off my tie. 
And that's their standards, and that's okay. The Sunday night, Pastor Martin, he says, I don't wear a suit coat. He's only on special days. I said, okay. You know, we're more worried about, oh, well, you meet in a hotel, rather than, you know what, I'll tell you something. I, 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 um, I was talking to Pastor Sol, uh, no, I was talking to Ulysses, and Ulysses said, well, where do you meet? I said, we meet in a hotel. And we meet in a little conference room in a hotel. He said, don't say little. I'm like, dude, all right, cool. I don't know if he remembers saying that, but I remember him saying that. Hey, you know what? It don't matter where we meet. It's a matter of fact that we meet. Is there not a cause? We're more worried about our, what our government's doing rather than what our God can do through us. We're fussing and fighting over the little things rather than fussing and fighting over the big thing, which is souls going to hell. How sad. Amen? How, how sad. We need to go out, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Because our, the battle is, is being lost on, on all fronts. Because we don't pick up the sword. Which is the word of God. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. We don't pick up the word of God. Win the lost at any cost. My dear friends, Dr. John R. Rice was lost in the cause of the sword of the Lord, evangelism and soul winning. Brother Roloff was lost in the cause for standing in the faith. Do Brother Robertson was lost in the cause of evangelism and soul winning. Most parents are, 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 need to be lost in the cause of their children, mo uh, raising their children. Most Christians need to have, ha ha be lost in the cause to win souls. Mo the, the average pastor quits 18 months after starting a church. Uh, we, helped start a, we helped birth a church in, in, in Toronto. And the pastor left not even a year later. And it took them several years to find a, a pastor. And they got a young man that's pastoring there now. My dear friends, we need to get going and serving the Lord. Because if we don't, we will lose souls. The Bible says in Proverbs 11.30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. We need to go win souls. There, are an there is an average of five missionaries leaving the field for every one that goes to the field. There are five churches closing every year. I know several churches and even Christians who don't even support missions. And you ought to support missions. Church members want to have a feel-good, lovey-dovey, sing kumbaya, hold hands, and, and high-five message rather than, hey, a rip-snorting barn burner that corrects you. There's a saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, and I believe that. Jesus had a cause, so why shouldn't we? Walking in the steps of our, of our what? Should be our Lord. Well, he had a cause. His cause was found in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. It says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You were lost. And so was I. Twenty-seven people got saved. Not because of we did anything, but because He did it because we were ready. Amen? We were ready. Twenty-seven people. Is there not a cause? Our security guard who's sitting there, who was sitting there, he, he got saved. And you know what? That was the cause at that point in time. Brother, uh, Brother Edwin. Brother Edwin, man, he's a cool guy. I, I messaged him as we were at the airport. Is there not a cause? And I'm talking not just to save your friends, your family. I'm talking to save those of whom you do not know. 
is they're not a cause. Some of you probably don't have, haven't, even, haven't even led anybody to the Lord. Ever. Not tried. And you do not even care if you're family members. We went to the Philippines and we hit the ground running. We started witnessing right away. We witnessed to her family we think, and we could have gotten ostracized. Oh, get out of our house. Don't talk about that, Jesus. We didn't care. Do we want people's soul saved? Do we want the people to, 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 uh, to, to see the glory, and, uh, glory of the Lord or do we want them to like us? I just, want, I just don't want to rock the boat. Well, I'd rather rock the boat on this side of the earth than rock the boat with them going to hell. We're more worried. Remember this morning we talked about being content? We're more worried about whether our toys work rather than souls getting saved, lives being changed. What's in your mind tonight? What are you thinking of tonight? Hello? Are you thinking of, hey man, I want to learn something tonight. I want to get right with God. I want to, I want to see, I want to see the glory of the Lord. Or are you thinking, hmm, what am I going to have for dinner? Hmm, how long is the preacher going to be? Hmm. You know, I, I, I said to the, I think it was Sunday. I said Sunday night. I said, well, I don't have to be at the airport till Friday. So I got a long time to preach. And I had people say amen. Front row. They didn't care how if I went overtime. Sunday morning, I asked the preacher, so what time do you finish? He said, when you're done. And Brother Saul, what time, are you, what time do you finish? When you're done. Oh, oh, okay. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause good enough for us to be like David and have a sense of urgency. He ran. He ran. I don't think, I, I think every word of God is pure, don't you? I think it's there for a reason, right? Amen? Well, a sense of urgency. We well, you know we can have fun by serving the Lord too, amen? Sunday night I was preaching and I... Sunday morning, Pastor Martin told his church family, don't laugh at his first joke. And I said my first joke right off the hop, and everyone was like this. I said, man, this is a tough crowd. Now that after that, they laughed at my, joke, my jokes. And my first joke, I think, was the funniest of all the jokes. But hey, amen. <laughs> um, but we can have fun. We're not... We're, we're, we're not uh, you know, church, go to church, have fun, not, not, oh, well, I'm going to church. Hey, if you have fun going to a ball game, you can have fun going to church. Amen? You can have fun serving, serving the Lord. You know, baseball players get paid millions of dollars to play a kid's game. In a couple weeks, I'll, I'll get paid, not millions of dollars, but I'll get paid to umpire a kid to, to be a part of a kid's game I'll be a kid I get to be a kid that's one of the reasons why I like the umpiring baseball because I get to be a kid again we want people to come to us rather than us go to them we want them to beg for salvation rather than us begging them to be saved My wife's parents' house, uh, we were crying. I was begging them to get saved. Will you please get saved? Will you please? I have tears streaming down my face. Will you please get saved? And But we want them to come to us and say, oh, I want to get saved. And you know what, people, this, this doesn't happen. For the most part, it doesn't happen. How many people beg to get saved Hit in this room tonight? You don't have to beg. Lord, save me. Okay, done. We want to have our one-hour church services and not be bothered by tithing, serving the Lord, giving up, giving up your overtime, 
etc., etc. What am I saying? We need to get lost in the cause. And the cause is winning souls. Is the cause is teaching your disciples. Simply that's it. Is there not a cause? To answer your question. To answer that question, yes there is. How do you get lost in the cause? I'm going to give you five points and I'm going to wrap up tonight. Number one, by enlisting as a soldier. By enlisting as a soldier. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 5 says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, of, uh, in the grace that is in Christ, Je Christ Jesus. And, all, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witness, the same commit thou unto faithful men. Are you a faithful man? That's enlisting. Who shall be able to teach all others also? Now, let me stop there. Uh, I couldn't. I got up at three o'clock in the morning, and I was watching a documentary on the Passion and I about the the U.S. Marine who left his post. You know who I'm talking about, Sergeant something or other. And and yeah, he should. I think he should have been court-martialed, and he was court-martialed. Was he court-martialed? I I don't know, but I I was I I. It was three o'clock in the morning, and I kind of was getting bits and pieces of it. But he, you know, he was. Yeah, he left his post. You know what? We ought to be court-martialed for leaving our post. Our post is picking up the Bible and saying, hey, you must be born again. Hello? And it says, verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that awareth and entangleth himself the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. If And if a man also strive for masteries, Yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. My dear friends, we need to strive for God's mastery. We need to strive to see souls saved. In Genesis chapter 24, verse 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who have lost, not left me destitute of my master for his mercy and truth. I, being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master and master's brethren. We need to enlist in the army of the Lord, in the soldier of the cross. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. My dear friends, if, we did, if we are, or our steps are ordered by God, we'll delight in the way that God has for us to walk. What is your, uh, have, you, have you enlisted? I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may not never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Are you in the Lord's army tonight? Have you enlisted as a good soldier, as a soldier of the cross that sees, wants to see souls get saved? Or are you worried about your stupid toys that you have? Number two. By living, how do we get lost in the cause? By living a separated life. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 says, O ye, uh, o ye Corinthians, open your mouth, uh, our mouth is open unto you, and our, our, our heart is enlarged. Uh, ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the shame, I speak unto, unto, as unto my children, be ye also enlarged, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concourse hath Christ with Belial, for, for, what, uh, for what part hath he that he believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come up from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Wow. And, here we go, and be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. My dear friends, we need to live a different life. 
You know, people say, what, one of the persons said to me, um, Elsie, there's something different in Elsie before she left, when she, was, when, she, when she left many years ago, 20 some years ago, to now. There's something different. I said, you now she, she, she knew Jesus Christ. You know, in the Philippines, the, the clothing there is, 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 is not um, left to be... De- is, 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 the, some of the clothing is left to be desired. But the, the girls, hey, pay attention here. Don't show notes. Just deal with it after church, okay? Please deal with it after church. I want you to pay. I want you to be more mindful of what is being said right now. Seriously. Please. If they care more about what they what they wear at their job than what we act and behave and and wear because we're our job as a soldier of the lord as a christian we're pathetic we become just like what the world is we need to be separate our churches need to have the old fashioned standards Number three, how do we get how do we um, get lost in the cause? By simply being a soul winner. Matthew twenty eight eighteen to twenty, the Great Commission: Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We need to go out and get to, uh, and, and win the lost to Christ. You know, somebody won you. Amen? You didn't just happen, happen to get saved. Somebody planted a seed. You may have gotten saved quietly in a room by yourself, but somebody, somebody led you to the Lord. My wife, my, my wife got led to the Lord by our daughter when you were a few months old. God used you when she was nursing you. To get saved. My dear friends, we need to be very careful on how we go out and win people. I'm not saying stand at the street corner and, and, and preach, if that, but if that God wants you to do that, we ought to do that. But I am saying, you know what, you are the 67th book of the Bible. If you ain't going to live a separate, separate book, of, by the way, I'm not trying to add a book to the Bible. You, you're the Bible and live in life. If you don't live what the Bible says, they're not going to listen to you. They're not. But my dear friends, if we're not going out there to win souls, what's going on? People know. You know what? Your neighbors know that you should be in church on Sunday night. I'm waiting for somebody to say to me, hey, your your van was in in your... your, uh, in your, your parking spot last Sunday. Yeah, it was, because I was in the Philippines. People know. Take a stand. Number four, train the next generation. Teach your children about God. You cannot teach your children about God if you don't know about them yourself. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Are my kids perfect? Nope. Have they made mistakes? Yep. Were they big ones? Not really. Not really. But my dear friends, there needs to be a cause. Our cause is to teach our children to go soul winning. Our cause is to teach our children how to live right. Our cause is to to stay focused for the Lord. You might be the only person that could win that person to Christ. Is there not a cause? You know, my wife, and we were talking to Edwin. And Edwin wasn't getting everything that I said because of the language barrier. But my wife, she came and she, you know, translated for me. I'm so thankful for a godly wife who loves the Bible, who loves their language, who loves her people, and let we led them to the Lord. Amen, Mama. Is there not a cause? We're so 
foolishly fighting over the little things rather than the big picture. I was speaking to somebody yesterday and they were just nattering over some foolish things. I'm like, man, good night in a million years. Why? The goodness of the Lord. If we're always murmuring and complaining, God, people, people won't listen to us. My dear friends, we need to get lost in the cause of winning souls to Christ. This summer, you know, I challenged, I, I challenged the Hinnespatag Baptist Church at their Bible study. Home Bible study, by the way. Home. During the day. Okay, people you know, take off work. They go to Bible study. Or they don't work, or they don't have a job, or whatever they're farmers, or whatever the case may be, whatever the case may. I don't know what it is, but they 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 went there during the day, and they put out a spread of food to eat after the Bible study. The whole person who's oh not only opens up their home, that's what they did. I challenged them, each one to pick a pew. And pray and fill it. Not just, not just pray people to come in, you actually doing something as well. Guess what happened Sunday morning? Saturday night they prayed, guess what happened Sunday morning? Every pew was filled. Why? Because they saw there was a cause. In the Philippines they have... To God be the glory on buses. I wonder if they're, they're actually, if they're actually meaning or is it just a saying. And I wonder how many times that we say, oh, bless God, or to God be the glory, or amen, if it's just a saying or do we actually mean it? All to Jesus I surrender. Did you? Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you? I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Do you? The cause is, my dear friends, well, the same cause Jesus had. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish have everlasting life. There's a verse in the Bible that says that we should die and that Christ liveth in us, then we will live. Isn't that weird? Well, we got to die so Christ can live in us, uh, in us so we can li live. No, that's not weird. That's just biblical truth. I didn't expect too many amens both this morning and this evening. But we'll hear what I'm saying is there's a, there's a cause. We need to get out and we need to go out and win souls. We need to get we need to just keep going and 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 keep going. We need to stop worrying about the little things and, 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 and worry about the souls getting saved. We need to stop thinking, well, I'm right. I, I need to prove myself right. You know the only, the only thing we need to prove ourselves right in? There's one thing we need to prove ourselves right in. Salvation. And it's not ourself, it's Him. That's it. Things that happened 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, who cares? It happened. Let it be. Let it go. I'm tired of it. We need to be more focused on winning souls than anything else. And then when we win souls, let's focus on them to train them. Train up a child. There's a lot of spiritual babies out there that have no training. And what happens? We lose them to the cults. It's so sad. So sad. You know, we're worried about the audio working. Who cares? I didn't care if we had to, didn't have a, have a video. Yeah, you know, we got some people watching. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. If 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 we had no video, then that's that's sorry. I cared more about what the message is rather than the means. Oh well, it's okay. What are we focused on? When you got up this morning, what did you do? Were you focused on what's what's going on on the TV? 
Or were you focused on what you're going to get out of the book today? When you go to the grocery store, ladies and gentlemen, you go get gas, ladies and gentlemen, you go to the mall, ladies and gentlemen, what do you see? Do you see a person or do you see a soul? I hope you see a soul.